Hi, hi everyone. Um, so I'm gonna be the prime minister for this particular debate. For PY preferences, please just place them in the chat box. Um, my pronouns are she slash her. I will just set up my timer. Great. Okay. So beginning my speech in three, two, one. Panel, two things in this prime minister speech. First, we'll br I'll briefly talk about the setup and then secondly, I'll head straight on to the arguments. Great. First and foremost, what does this policy look like? I think that this looks like the government imposing this to sports leagues such as the NBA and the F NFL. Understand that people who opt into these contracts instead of studying can lead to poor young individuals signing contracts and focusing on sports and are easily being fashioned by these professional sports leagues. Therefore, it becomes an either-or scenario wherein they either pour their life force into sports or into like education. Now, I think that now we think that government has an incentive to intervene and make it possible for both options to be viable for such individuals considering that the longevity of a sports career is comparatively much, much shorter as to other careers. Like, for example, if you're a gymnast, when you reach 30 years old, you, you are considered to be too old already to compete, but you still have the rest of your life in front of you. Therefore, state, the state wants you to be secure. The state wants you to contribute to society. And we think that this policy leads to that particular thought lead to that particular outcome. The next thing that we tell you is that these professional sports leagues won't be allowed to play without the existence of, like, without providing tertiary education to these particular individuals. Now, is the policy difficult to fulfill? Understand that leagues can easily provide tertiary education considering that they have a lot of income and capital from the previous seasons, but more than that, they have a lot of business partnerships. The money in terms of like the sports industry is highly concentrated to these professional sports leagues that have uh, that receive a lot of like donations or partnerships with particular politicians and not and businessmen and not the vast majority of players. When it comes to schedule, we're okay with having it concurrent with school schedule, but also this mandate is for every team, which already preempts any rebuttal or any argument coming from opposition that would say that, oh, juggling academics while playing will cripple and prevent these individuals from flourishing in terms of their sports skills. Great. Arguments are for Firstly, why is this necessary to solve the problems in like the sports industry in general? Three layers of analysis under this. Firstly, there's so much risk with signing with a professional sports team. Understand that for the vast majority of players, success is elusive and risk is comparatively higher. Not everyone can be Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, etc. A lot of players, they don't end up coaching. They don't, they don't end up reaching MVP level. But also, the focus is already in the top players who are like, likely to be privileged already. But the fact stands is that the risk of having an injury means that it will prematurely end your career. The conclusion here is that for a lot of these people that sign contracts with these professional sports leagues, they don't have a lot of safety nets in terms of the opportunities, in terms of like the other career pathways in their life. The reason why we recognize uh so this means that the vast majority of these people are the most vulnerable considering that competition is way too intense and they are vulnerable due to a couple of structural reasons. Number one, they're probably not born well off. Therefore, they're disadvantaged by financial resources considering that coaches who are really, really good or could, are really expensive but more than that they might also be disadvantaged by geography they might be far away from training centers they might not ha have access to good courts they might not have access to the things that they need in order to get better into that particular sport uh particular sport but more than uh but more than that the second layer of analysis here is that why is tertiary net education necessary and why is secondary education not good enough understand that there needs to be more of an assurance when entering professional sports leagues, considering that these individuals invest their life force into this particular industry. 
But more than that, a tertiary education is important because it gives them a competitive edge. But more than that, it is more specialized. So it can, for example, be complementary to sports. Like they can focus on sports medicine, sports science, or like commu- like nutrition, for example. So the principle here is that what they're doing right now isn't... So the principle here is intuitive, right? What they're doing shouldn't be the only thing that they do for the rest of their life, considering that it's not really that viable for them to keep doing it. Like, it's not viable for them to have, like, uh, to keep um, to keep playing until they're older. But more than that, they can have other specializations and they can focus on their academics as well. Now, why is all of this important? This is important because... Because the tertiary education provides a fallback and safety net for these vulnerable players who likely are disenfranchised already and have structural barriers preventing them from reaching the top. But more than that, uh, preventing them from reaching the top. This is important considering that entering into a professional sports league oftentimes locks them out from other choices. And so if they don't have other fallbacks or safety nets that might uh, fallbacks or safety nets, then it's going to be a problem in terms of their security in the future. Second second argument, why the counterfactual is not enough. Why, what might opposition say? Opposition might say that, oh, you know, things such as sports scholarships or sports partnerships and advertisements already exist. Therefore, uh, already exist. Why is like a tertiary education important? Understand that such things such as sports scholarships or advertisements don't really happen to everyone. But more than that, you may have advertisements now, but the fact stands that in the future, when you're too old to be marketable already, you won't have those things that are like, could, that are making you money right now. Opposition then, therefore, has the burden to prove that the alternatives are enough for the vast majority of these people to sign contracts with these particular sports teams, that it will be enough for their future after their short-lived career, but more than that, that it will lead to their particular security. What all of this shows is what all of this shows then is that a tertiary education is considered to be necessary, considering that it provides them a specialization, therefore it secures their uh, it provides them a specialization, therefore it secures the fact that they do have like competitive edge and a fallback in terms of the fact in terms of the possibility that number one, their career might end too early, or number two, that they don't reach the high heights that people such as Kobe Bryant or LeBron James are able to reach. For these reasons, I think the fact stands that uh these professional sports leagues should be mandated to provide tertiary education considering that they already have a lot of clout and capital to do this already. Okay, thank you, Prime Minister, for your speech. Let's now move on to lead of all business speech here. Thank you. Sorry, um, should I start? Uh, yeah, whenever you're ready. Sorry, uh, did, okay. I, is the mic not audible? Anyways, uh, um, yeah, I uh, I think it's honestly probably our Wi-Fi a little bit. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Whenever you're ready. Okay, Uh, so I'm Tishan. I'll be the first speaker, pronouns are he, him. Um, and I'll start. Oh, sorry, in... I'm sorry, just, just one thing. I, I, think, I think someone put something, Uh, wait, why can I, never mind, never mind. Yeah, and please go on. Uh, yeah, just uh, put points of interest in the chat. Um, okay, I'm going to start in three, two, one. Okay, um, good morning, everyone. Ultimately, today's debate is going to come down to the responsibility and harm. And while we accept that there are systemic harms in the status quo, we will prove that the Parliament's proposition places the responsibility on the wrong actors, as well as putting increased harm both on society as a whole and the players that they claim to be protecting. But before I move on to my um, points, I'll be talking about um, how the responsibility shouldn't be put on the sports leagues and how um, restricting players' choice is ultimately going to harm them in the long run. Well, my secondary um, speaker is going to be talking about... um, uh, is going to be talking about um, how this, how the increased um, role model um, status of these players it puts um, unfair um, expectations on society as a whole. But before I do that, I'm just going to move on to a few rebuttals. Um, 
so the model was slightly unclear on how um, the tertiary education and the um, position in these um, sport leagues interact. If these players fail, if they don't put enough effort into their um, tertiary education, is their um, position in the sports leagues um, like uncertain? Will they be kicked out of the sports league? If they will they basically kicked out of their future, what they've worked hard enough hard for for like decades, um, if they fail this completely unrelated um, secondary thing. Um, additionally, they talk about how this government is um, responsible to their players and therefore, um, and government is responsible to the citizens. And um, this is why it's the state's best interest to do all this. And to some extent, we do, we do agree. We do agree that the state has a responsibility um, to the best interest of everyone. And, but we don't see how that extends to the league. Um, we don't see how that extends to these private companies that ultimately, at the end of the day, exist to create profit, just like every other um, private company, and exist to um, make um, professional, high-level sports players. Um, the only real point of like, responsibility that the opposition put um, put on this is that they physically can because they have funds. And while we do think, I mean, and while we will argue that in the future, um, because, you know, these funds aren't necessarily sufficient to um, pursue such a completely different path, we will ultimately uh, seek to prove that at the end of the day, um, these sports leagues as private companies do not have a responsibility um, to the players in the same way that a state would. And finally, there was like this weird thing trying to preempt um, like a juggling how the school term and the um, training isn't going to um, isn't going to um, mismatch. But ultimately, we think that this is um, irrelevant because as high level top like top tier um, professionals, um, we think that basically the entire year is going to be training season season and any um, distraction from this any at all, which is especially at tertiary education, because it's going to be a significant distraction and it's going to be um, put significant strain. Um, ultimately, in the, in, at the end of the day, um, there are better alternatives to managing risks that the opposition isn't going to put forward, such as like insurance from the government. And while there is a say, um, this might prove some kind of safety net, it's only a safety net if the players are willing to opt into it or willing to put their effort in and willing to graduate which as we're going to prove not a lot of people are actually going to be able to um now moving on to my points responsibility so we disagree with um the opposition that it's a responsibility of these institutions to mother the players the main responsibility is to the team and to the sport and to the bottom line um, which may be callous but if you think about it, if you think about every other version of um, every other company, no other company has this added benefit, um, added um, responsibility. Software companies aren't being forced to pay for, um, you know, gym memberships to prevent atherosclerosis. sclerosis. This is a similar thing. And while we do agree that um, um, the these players have an added risk that, um, you know, software developers don't have, we don't think that this falls on um, the the uh, the sports leagues especially because these sports leagues aren't going to have these players forever and these players are going to move and they have agency and they have support they have support net networks they have parents they have their own personal coaches they have mentors if the this responsibility was to fall to anyone it would be to the government but that's not the debate we're having today the debate we're having today is responsibility of um the sports teams these private um these these sports leagues these um sports leagues that frankly should not be involved in this aspect of um, their players' lives. And secondary, uh, secondly, um, this is not only not their responsibility, it's harming their major responsibility. Um, by diverting, in, um, diverting resources, diverting um, important resources that should be like not only financial resources, but time, time of the players, time of the um, staff, um, uh, yeah, sorry, um, can I just take a point of interest? Um, yes. So are you also companies um, providing seminars and further education for their employees while they work for these tech companies, which is the parallel to our complementary collegiate education policy from Prime? Sure, but... Um... 
to answer that, ultimately these um seminars and things are improve uh, um sent to improve them at their own job, right? They're sent to improve the software developers, get parallel skills that improve them as software developers. These this is completely different um things that are ultimately just done to support the players' best interests as and um it's not the responsibility of the sports league. And moving on, even if it was a responsibility, which it's not. Um, it's not actually benefiting the players in best interest because um, by limiting players' choice, um, which is especially important for um, tertiary education, the choice, the, the personal investment, the personal driven nature of tertiary education is so much more apparent than secondary education. This is restricting their choice and it's going to put significant harm. Um, tertiary education requires personal driven um uh, uh, assignments, it re require, requires research, it requires a thesis, it requires like a significant amount of time, it requires a significant amount of interest. It's the reason why a lot of people who don't have this insane pressure, this insane pressure that these players are under, a lot, even without that, a lot of people drop out of tertiary education. With this added pressure, um, it's frankly not um, something that a lot of these players, these people under immense pressure can handle. And ultimately, this is going to lead to resentment. This is going to lead, and due to this intense pressure, this is going to lead to significant mental harm. And um, yeah, I see my time. Thank you very much. Thank you for your speech. Let's now move on to Deputy Prime Minister speech. You're here. Hi, uh, testing. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Okay. Yeah, can hear you. Okay. Uh, POIs by voice features one before the six minute, but there might be a time I'm accepting before that period. Um, so yeah. If at any time my voice isn't clear, let me know verbally as well so I can adjust my microphone. I'll just set up my timer before I start. All right, starting my speech in three, two, one, now. The world is competitive and favors the young. This is an unfortunate reality because a person's youth is considered as the money-making machine for any type of corporate structure, for any type of leagues, for any type of businesses that you might enter in as an individual. I would like to clarify here that professional leagues are oftentimes corporate structures that get away with short-term benefits only that advantages their company. They have the incentive to profit off from the youths of many individuals. That's why you see a lot of tr uh, tryouts. That's why you see a lot of um, trying to get a lot of talent in a short period of time, even if they have not yet graduated in college, even if they have not yet finished their, their secondary education. This is problematic so much because there's a lot of power asymmetry between leagues and players. Oftentimes, leagues try to make sure that they gain significant advantage despite you being uninformed with your choice, being you unsure about your future yet, but you're promised so much with the contract that is placed in front of you. There will be three things that I will be forwarding in my speech. The first thing is the rebuttal. The second is the extension. And third is definitely why we win this debate. The first thing is here is to rebut the entire point of opposition. They say mainly it's, a, it's not about the state responsibility anymore. It should not be within their scope, scope. But we say coming from government side that it still is a responsibility to make citizens productive and included in the employment sector, especially if you want to make your individuals productive. This is also one of the mandates by, of the government to ensure that everyone has a niche place, has still are still able to find their um, still able to become productive and financially capable. Three things under this. One, the policy is important because it removes the temporary nature of employment from opposition side because it's very short term as my previous speaker mentioned. But second, opposition's productivity is only based on your physical strength and its remains. That as long as you're still youthful and competitive, you are hireable. But most athletes do not even last for seven years. This is extremely harmful because they just hire you just for the just for the for the reason that you are still able to do their demands on you, but after that you're unable to stay within that spe specific professional leagues. But thirdly, the state knows education is a permanent solution because it still is a right to begin with. It is within the scope of the state to provide you such these things, especially if you come from less privileged backgrounds. 
any skill that you acquire is applicable to multiple industries compared to primarily training your physical strength on. That's why it's still within the state's responsibility. And these are safety nets that don't exist from opposition side and they don't necessarily try to tackle the consequences even if you are able to get these contracts at the very end of the day. Moving further to my extension, I'll tell you two main things. Why this is completely okay to begin with even if the athletic skills might be lowered. But the second thing is telling you about the choice and why this is completely important. The first thing is even if we're biting our trade off here that these athletic skills will be lowered this is still okay as long as you're assured of your future careers outside of the sports leagues because oftentimes you are locked out in the you your individuals who are locked out in these industries who may or may not know what the future lies be in front of them they may they may not stay long for two to three years or even five years a lot of the athletes that we know today are actually exemptions like Kobe Bryant, like LeBron James, all of which have careers that are peaking and continue to uh, continue to rise because they have already garnered so much support. But this is not the vast majority of cases for every athlete that exists out there. Oftentimes, athletes give up for two years, three years because they find their training too difficult or probably they don't have time to train themselves mentally. That's why they're less competitive compared to the training pool that the other companies or train sports leagues have, especially. That's the thing that's missing on the opposition side. Their ability to have concurrent knowledge building, their ability to have the idea how in making strategies far more better, etc., when they are accepted into sports leagues. Now, second thing is, we told you that the policy is going to be concurrent knowledge building as what Krista told you, that education such as sports science, sports health, and psychology is vital to increase your capability and your skills as an athlete to begin with. Why is this likely to be important? Two main things. First, sports is not just based on physical strength, but how strong your men mental faculties are faculties are. Two things under this. The first thing is to suggest sports science or science courses allow you to have greater understandings with how your body moves. Krista told you about nutrition. I'm going to I'm going to tell you about how it's important to maintain yourself post trainings, post workouts, etc. But secondly, even if it's not an entirely related degree, it fosters critical thinking vital to strategy making in team plays. This is very important to football, to basketball, and any type of sports that you see worldwide. But second, what is our comparative, you may ask? Three things. The first thing is oftentimes knowledge is limited to coaches only on their side, which makes teams less efficient. Second, participation of athletes is also limited and they just listen to their coaches all the time. Why is this harmful? Two things. One, because in sports games, they have limited time to strategize, right? Their collective brain power is limited too. This affects their gameplay. It's not always the case that coaches know best for their players. But secondly, players also have limits in understanding positioning, spatial intelligence, and their opponent's strategies at the very end of the day. So you may ask, what, why is our side better? And this impacts the four main things. First thing is to suggest, our side and policy has a holistic approach for athletes' health. The second thing, it makes them perform better and have productive strategy making in winning games with their coach. Three, we expand their knowledge. But fourth, the body, re the body reaches its prime at a young age and we want to maximize the athlete's performance this way. Conclusion here, it's exclusive on our side to have, vi to have a vital development when it comes to making our athletes more competitive and productive. But the second thing is about the informed choice, right? Why is this completely important? Because they will know if they really want to pursue professional sports to begin with. What happens first, let's characterize, when you sign a contract. There are two main scenarios to this. One, when you oftentimes sign them when you're relatively young. Four characterizations and the way in which we analyze this thing. One, if you're relatively young, you're likely to be an individual who hasn't yet gained a grasp of how the world works. Second, if you're under 21, this presumes that you aren't able to have stable jobs, financial incomes, etc. Likely you still live with your parents because of circumstances. But three, you haven't experienced yet what it means to work in a high-paying job, etc. or volunteer work as a fresh graduate. But fourth, Sometimes you're unsure with the decisions that make you lock in an industry two to five years, but you're not sure where life leads you. You may grow to like it, but passion is often short-termist. You need to find the next best thing in, in your life to pay bills and have you experiences. But second, even if you're not young, it's okay as long as you are able to explore other career paths. Why does this matter? This assumes that in this debate, you haven't completed yet your tertiary education. But oftentimes, completion of education is a prerequisite for other career paths where oftentimes employers look for your diploma. Oftentimes, individuals have limited opportunities if you don't have education uh, completion. Three, they, the likely scenario is they land on not so competitive jobs. The comparative is here to suggest that they're not, not locked out in a career that might fall off. This is the inherent harm of the opposition side. We solve this by giving them more than just a short-term career in sports leagues. And with that, we're proud to propose things.
And thank you for a speech last night. We wanted every leader of opposition to be true here. Hi, am I audible? Yes. Um, um, so it's, it's, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, we were having some technical issues on our side. Um, everything's fine, right now? No, yes. All right. Um, so I'll be starting in three, two, one. Um, so ladies and gentlemen of the house, it's a side proposition actually comes up, uh, comes up today to the house, not providing us with a model as to how they're going to implement this policy into society right now. They haven't defined exactly what they're going to make tertiary, uh, define tertiary education for us, right? They haven't told us if these athletes are actually spending a few months uh, going through a degree in plant science, or if they are going to be uh, getting doctorates that will take us about that will take them about ten years, they haven't told us why exactly the other than the fact that oh these sports leagues are rich and therefore they have a responsibility to uh, save all these uh, save all these uh, athletes from the impending doom of failure within a few years. They haven't told us exactly why the sports leagues are uh, inherently responsible simply because they are rich. And that in the, that that in itself tells us exactly why side proposition is unable to make their case right now uh, to win, right? Um, so inherently, we've told you already that practically uh, their their model doesn't stand, right? We told you exactly why it doesn't stand, and simply because they haven't told us how they're going to implement it in society. They haven't told us exactly what the minimal expectation of tertiary education is, and therefore by uh, therefore in doing that, their model doesn't stand, right? Secondly, uh, the uh, we I already told you exactly what their main argument of, of today is, right? Um, and that's the simple fact that look here, sports leagues are absolute multi is a is a multi sports leagues are multi billion dollar companies, and therefore, in doing so, they have an inherent responsibility to stop these stop these athletes from actually um, going through the risk of actually not being able to. Uh, uh, or failing of uh, or failing of sorts, right? We tell you, we'd like to ask side opposite, side proposition. What makes these what what makes these sports leagues so responsible to take care of these uh, take care of these athletes in such an aspect, right? We tell you that they don't have this kind of inherent responsibility simply because we are living in the private sector right now, right? The private sector is profit is profit oriented, and we and it's a and it's a fact that we need to accept. And it's not the responsibility of the government to be making those kind of changes, right? We don't ask just because just because Elon Musk is a, is a multi just because he's a multi billionaire. We don't ask him to solve world hunger, right? Similarly, we don't expect the sports leagues to be doing that kind of charitability. We ask that the government come up with another model that is cap that that uses their own financial resources to make that to make that possible, right? They tell us that the prime minister comes up and tells us that juggling both of these. Um, but juggling both education as well as a strenuous course in uh, in exercise and practicing for sports events is easy, right? We're telling you that it's not, right? We're telling you that, look here, the moment you spend two hours studying for an exam, that's two hours away from the gym, right? That, take, that, that, that comes onto our side in terms of uh, ruining the entire competitive balance of sports, right? We ask them a simple question as to why these players can't just pursue tertiary education after... Um, after after pursuing their course of uh, sports, right? We tell you that if there is such a, a large amount of people failing after two or three years, I'm sure that two or three years isn't much gonna is isn't gonna hold them back, right? We're telling you that uh, when they tell us that uh, that that when you're actually uh, do, putting this kind of implementation in the sport in in all athletes in status quo, you're actually you're actually ruining the sport itself by creating players who are not motivated, who are not uh, who are not giving in their all. Because at the end of the day, these people are have something to fall back on, right? You're you're creating players who have something to fall back on, and are therefore not motivated as much, and therefore aren't performing as well, right? Their second proposition told us that sport that that sport that sports leagues are this 
um horrible uh, 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 created this picture that sports leagues are the selfish organization that are benefiting of the um naive naive nature of youth and therefore they are inherently bad right but we're telling you that they're not right we're telling you that these youths are actually benefiting off of leagues right and the and the main reason is look here these these youths are often kids who already have an inherent talent they are actually kids who have worked hard throughout their lives and therefore have a skill in this very sport right the the league itself has the response is actually doing them a favor by making it by providing them with an income for this very skill like right? they don't have a skill in in studying medicine they don't have a skill in studying uh, engineering right They're, so therefore the league itself is providing them with a with a means to make some money out of the skill that they are able to hone right secondly they tell us that this government has a responsibility responsibility to society right according to prop 2 but we tell you that like like i mentioned earlier the private sector doesn't deserve that kind of burden because it's a completely illogical burden to be placing on society uh, and the private sector right now then they tell us that athletes are actually giving up right and we'll look here at the end of the day the reason that athletes and professional athletes are paid compensated uh, actually compensated so so well for the risk that they are putting in is because those people are actually working hard towards the to working hard towards making that money right they are actually undergoing a, a severe risk towards making that kind of money and just like that and just like that they shouldn't be given an easy way out and then when and in making that sort of fallback system you're actually reducing the value of being a professional athlete right it's not an easy thing and side proposition side opposition ag agrees that it's not an easy path to go through but at the end of the day that's what makes the sport itself more valuable right so i'll be moving on to my main substantive that i'll be addressing today and that it's that it's creating a negative stigma in society right side opposition side proposition has completely lost the idea of what intelligence really is right there's different types of intelligence and tertiary education is not what defines what intelligence is in status quo right they're encouraging a negative stigma in society that encourages um, that the only way to success is by the traditional means of education right that's not how the 21st century works that's not what we're seeing in 2023 we're seeing multi millionaires new multi billionaires come up in life right now simply through uh simply through means of their own uh means of their own right without a piece of paper that tells them that they've completed a few years of few years of studies there are people who are making their own money through their own means and that's the kind of um edu that that's the kind of stigma that we want to create in society that that hard work uh, ha hard work and the system that uh people are able to get through life and people are able to achieve success away from the traditional system is something that we want to encourage in society right now right we tell you that these people are idols and role and uh, idols and role models and do and their responsibility to society is to show that they are peaking in the career that they have chosen and not some fallback system that they want to that that they have right and that is why we'd like to urge you to side with side opposition right now thank you so much thank you for the speech well let's move on to the next speaker government let's hear here Hello. Uh, am I audible? Sure. Thank you. Hi, my name is Neil. I'll be going to whip. My pronouns are he, him. And for POI, please just message in the chat POI, and then I'll accept one um in due time. Okay. I'll start my speech in three, two, one. Now. Deputy Leader of Opposition says, "These kids may be poor, may have bad lives, which is why they go to these leagues, achieve the athletic dream, become LeBron James, get much and lots of money. This is exactly the harm that government wants to prevent. We do not want these poor, these underprivileged children to be constrained by a contract, forever a slave to these leagues." without any other option but to continue playing and playing within these companies earning lots and lots of money for them which may not trickle down to them fully at the end of the day 
So the principle coming from government bench is very, very simple. The compensation that these private leagues afford to these athletes is not enough. They may have money. They may have uh, they may have money. They may have training. They may have equipment. But that is not enough. They must also have a tertiary education. And this motion assumes they still haven't had that at this point in time. And what we are doing is prove to you that this is a necessary requirement concurrent with their athletic um, uh, aspirations. Before I move on to my two issues, let me first make a few clarifications. First, they said that we didn't clarify what tertiary education is, but this isn't true. They should have listened more clearly to our prime minister. We said that tertiary education is a specialized form of education that is highly complementary to the specialized nature of athleticism. We gave you the example of sports sciences, ladies and gentlemen, which is very, very uh, applicable to uh, basketball, to gymnastics, etc., which allows them an understanding of their body, which allows them how they'll be able to recover from harsh training faster, which is which are necessary and helpful tools to them on the field. But then we told you that the tertiary education, as well as it is specialized, it also has some general education units, minimal general education units, which are uh, which happen all around the world, which allows them to see the world much more and outside their athletic bubble, right? We don't want to be slaves to the athletic association and just play and play and play and that is their entire world. No, we want them to see uh, the, uh, other opportunities which may not have been available to them at that point in time. But more on that later. The second clarification is this. They said that, oh, it's not the responsibility of sports leagues, right? They said it's the responsibility of the state. But ladies and gentlemen, sports leagues already have heaps and heaps of responsibilities in the first place. They must have just compensation as they themselves conceded. They must have limited hours of work. They can't just work them in the gym 24-7 because they are people too. They, need, they have needs and they have this compensation. So with that principle of just compensation, our argument is that a tertiary education is commensurate to all of the efforts and harms that these athletes are going into under these leagues. Note that even if these leagues are private sectors, they're still registered under the state, ladies and gentlemen, and thus they must provide these rights and responsibilities as well. I'll take a POI later after my first issue. Let me go down to my first issue, which is about the principle of responsibility and the principle of choice. The first thing they said was, oh, the, the right to provide, education is a right, and thus it must be provided by the state and not these private sectors. But then in status quo, ladies and gentlemen, signing into a contract with these sports leagues denies you of that right to tertiary education because on their side, forced by the contract, you'll have to only be um, a training dummy, right? You'll only have to go on the court, go to the gym, and that's all your life is going to be. So on principle, it's opposition that denies these children, these athletes, the right to education. But then the second thing under this rebuttal is, is that if the principle is that if they earn from you, right, as these sports leagues do, then they must have, then these athletes are, um, sub, these athletes are going through harm, right? And by that principle, they must have a way so that they can alleviate that harm. They must have a fallback. We do not agree with their statement that, oh, fallbacks aren't necessary. Fallbacks are very necessary, given the characterization that they themselves said that these athletes are very vulnerable and very poor and look up to these leagues as salvation, right? So even if we divest some resources from these uh, corporations, we still believe that we uphold that principle to education. The second thing they said was, oh, the principle of choice, they're going to resent athleticism because, oh, I have to study and read books as well. But then on our side, it will be seen as just another requirement to becoming an athlete. You go to the gym, and then you also have to study this sports science or sports medicine as well. Another requirement to becoming a top athlete. But then second level, this response is even if there's some resentment to the sacrifice, that's okay because sacrifices are necessary for any career, for any success to happen. You might resent the fact that you have to go to LA and leave your family so you can train the Lakers. But it's, that's, that's a sacrifice that you want to do. You need to have if you want uh, if to undergo this tertiary education. But then the comparative on our side is that we make choice better because the choice on our side isn't constrained only by the contract. 
but your mind is open to other opportunities elsewhere provided by tertiary education. That's a benefit that opposition has yet to contend with, right? So the resolution of this issue is simple. The choice that we bit the burden and said that it's okay if we have these extra sacrifices because it will be necessary for their improvement, right? And the benefit that we have of an improved choice is something that they still cannot contend with. Before I go on to my next issue, I'll take a few on it. Uh, what would you do to players that fail their degree? What would the sports league? What should the sports league do in your model? Um, if they fail the degree, then they can take the degree again in another university. That's status quo. If you fail in one university and you want to try again, that's perfectly acceptable. Moving on to the second issue, right? The pragmatics. The first thing they said under this was that, oh, we're going to divide resources. And the first resource that they said they're going to divide is time. And I think this is okay because the burden to impose on one team dividing the training time and learning time is a burden that will happen also to other teams. So the burden is, uh, is distributed to all teams. So there's not going to be unfairness. There's not going to be imbalance. Then they said, oh, why can't they just learn after their career, right? But then this is when they ignored the substantives of my first two speakers. They said that education, it's important that you need use, right? You need these early formative years where and you will be able to learn. I do not think that the learning thereafter will be as efficient. But then they also feel to contend with the fact that what if these players are poor? What if they didn't succeed, right? What if they didn't get all those endorsements? How will they be able to pay for this tertiary education? At least now, you have the opportunity for a holistic education, right? Which is paid for by the leagues, right? So it will be easily accessible. The resolution of this issue and the resolution of this whole debate is that we're able to balance the harms are on these people and provide them with the fallback. And we are able to prove to you why exactly it's these leagues who have the responsibility uh, so that these athletes will not be harmed. We are very, very proud to propose. Thank you for your speech. Let's now move on to opposition with her here. Uh, hello, am I audible? Yes, you are. All right, so I'll be starting my speech in uh, three, two, one. Uh, sir, the side proposition had a clear burden to prove to us today, right? What did they have to tell us? First, they had to tell us why tertiary, providing tertiary education is the responsibility of the sports league. Secondly, that this would do more that, that this policy would do more benefits than harm. And thirdly, why tertiary education is important in the first place, right? Those are my clash and. And while that is the burden that government had to prove, I will be because of because of that, I will be basing my clash points on those three things, right? Now, first of all, uh, a few rebuttals, right? We from the beginning we were hammering side proposition, asking them why is this the responsibility of the league, right? Then we didn't get a response until that third speech, where they came and told us that you know this is compensation, right? First speaker didn't say, it, second speaker didn't say. It. We got a sort of response in that third speech saying the compensation is from the sports league is not enough and this should be considered as compensation, right? But then I asked you, right, where is the line that you're gonna draw? Uh, in compensation, right? How much do you expect compensation to be? And why? Uh, how much do you expect a private company to compensate if that is the line you're going to run on, right? Where is the line that is in society? Where, where Because in the first place, right? Government meddling with private companies is a risk in the first place, right? Government, and that, that, that's where the two sectors exist, right? The fact that the government shouldn't essentially meddle too much with the private companies. So if you want to mandate something where the government is going to enforce a private a private organizations to uh, do something, then they should clearly provide an explanation and an understanding as to why it is their responsibility. Why is it the sports team's responsibility to provide tertiary education to their players? That is something that the government should prove, where, especially when they're meddling in uh, pri the affairs of private companies. I will draw a parallel to what my first speaker said. Then should, should software companies Make play, make their employees obtain a gym membership. Is that like uh, because you know they're sitting on their desks all day and they need to be physically healthy? Is that something that those private companies should do? So we believe that this is a completely illogical uh, ideology to go through because essentially, if the government is meddling in the affairs of the private companies, they need to provide us a clear a clear reason that this is the responsibility of the sports team. And we did not see that from side proposition side proposition, right? So now move, let's move on to um, uh, the rest of the clash points, I'll, uh, rest of the rules I'll address within my clash point, right? Now, firstly, responsibility of the league, right? What is the responsibility of a sports league? It is to the sport, ladies and gentlemen, it is to the sport because at, at the end of the day, these are private companies who, whose main interest is in the sport. Now, firstly, 
the only argument that they told us is that they have the funds so that they should do it, right? Where should these funds go? Should these funds go into the tertiary education of failed players or should these funds go to bettering the sport, to get, by getting better equipment, to, you know, building a playing field that people can access, an accessible playing field, uh, bettering women's sports, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many avenues that these funds can go to to better the sport than... Uh, better than, than, than provide tertiary education or, or spend billions of dollars uh, of funds on uh, college education for uh, failed sports players, right? So they never told us, you know, this is, the, this is the responsibility of the league is to provide better futures or is to provide a degree, is to give a degree to the hand of the uh, player. They never told us, or th they never explained to us why that should be. And we, we, we've been telling you from the get-go that that is not the case, right? You need to tell us why uh, the government should be responsible, uh, sorry, why the sports league should be responsible for the tertiary education. They've told, they, they, they told us a plethora of harm. They told us, you know, sports players are young, they retire young, et cetera, et cetera. But they never told us why that's the sports league's problem, right? At the end of the day, when they drop out and when, they're when they drop out of the league, like, okay, that's it. Like, why, why, why? Is it, they never explain to us that this the exact reasons why the sports league should care. Secondly, the effect on the main stakeholders. Right? Who are the main stakeholders in this situation? The main stakeholders is one, the uh, sports league itself, two, sports, and three, the players, right? The, the three things are going to be affected the most. So I already told you, right? The sports league funding. So considering the sports league, this is going to, considering uh, the stakeholder of the sports league, this is going to cost a significant chunk of their funding. And even if they do have, in, uh, and even if they do have enough as they said, like multi-billion funding or whatever, where should these funds go? And I told, we told you it's for the betterment of the sport. I mean, and that this uh, whole argument that, you know, that, you know, tertiary education is essential isn't going to stand. Secondly, the players, right? We told you from our first, uh, by our first speaker speech, this is going to provide immediate harm, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they're not providing, they're not giving the players a choice. That they literally said this is a, the, the providing to having a tertiary education is a requirement to be a top athlete, quoting that third speaker. This is not, uh, this, we, we talked to you on the from the get go about choice, right? We talked to you about how these players enter sports league to play sports. We how these players enter sports leagues to break out, become the next Michael Jordan or whoever. And even if they can't, and that that is their main uh, goal to after they join a sports league. We told you that if they're being distracted from these uh, res from these uh, goals, if they're asked to stay stay in a room and study for three hours a day when they could be training, we told you this would put significant mental strain and stress on these players, right? And secondly, right, uh, and addressing their concurrent knowledge. Argument. They talked about how these degrees would be co concurrent. Uh, on, a, on, on, on a first basis, they never told us whether they'll provide the players with a choice to do whatever they want. They just said, you know, they, sh they could do concurrent degrees. Secondly, when they ran that argument, when they said that, you know, they could do concurrent degrees like sports medicine, they admitted that education will be, a, that tertiary education will be a distraction to these players, right? If they say, you know, doing, they should do concurrent things and not like normal, like uh, getting an IT degree or something, then they're essentially admitting that tertiary education is a distraction to their player, to their capabilities and to like practice time and et cetera, right? So we told you, we told you one, it, it puts significant mental strain, two, it distracts them from their main goal, which is, you know, trying to be the next Michael B. John, even if, um, so what we're saying is regardless of their capabilities, even if they cannot, even if they cannot, all players join the sports league to break out right that is their final that is their main goal they want their big break the big and so asking them to essentially uh what to do mandatory tertiary education is going to put a strain on the players that it's going to put a strain on the sport itself because you know players are going to be down players are going to be uh it's uh, that players are going to be mentally uh strained and stressed out when they're forced to do things like that and it's going to take away from play time it's going to take away from training time Finally, the final, uh, so essentially, I told you about how it's going to harm the future of the sport. I told you how it's going to harm the future of the players and how this is not the responsibility of the sports league. Final clash point, why is tertiary education important after all? My third speaker came up to you and talked to you about how there are plethora, there's a plethora of degree holders who don't have jobs, right? There's a plethora of people in society who have succeeded without tertiary education. So the, 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 what we want to spread in society, what the the idea that government should spread in society is not that tertiary education is the be all end all. The idea that government should spread in society is that you can be that you have to work hard to be successful and you can be successful either way, regardless of whether you get tertiary education or not, because there are so many people in society who are unable to get tertiary education, regardless of their sports players or not, right? So even if these people don't get tertiary education, this, does that mean they're going to fail in life? No, sir, because uh, we see so many people in uh, society, in top play, in top posts in society who don't have tertiary education, who have succeeded anyway. So we don't believe tertiary education is the be all end all in success anyway. So for those three points, we are proud to propose, uh, proud to oppose. Thank you.
Thank you for your speech. Let's now conclude authentic offer reply here, here. I don't think I'm audible. Uh, are you speaking? I, um, I just have it. I just have it. My device doesn't seem to be working. Am I audible? Uh, yes, you're audible. Sorry, could you confirm that again, please? Yes, you're audible. All right, thank you so much. Um, so I'll be starting in three, two, one. So like my previous speaker just mentioned before, our debate at the end boiled down to the responsibility of the sports league, right? Uh, side proposition was able to tell us that, look, uh, at the end of the day, these sports leagues are absolutely multi-billion dollar companies. It should, it, they have have this inherent responsibility to do so, and side opposition told you otherwise, right? The reason at the end of the day that side opposition stands strong in, in its case, and the reason that we've at the end won is because they have failed to explain that, the side proposition has failed to explain that, that responsibility to us, right? That was their main responsibility. It's very easy for side, op, side, for side proposition to come to the floor today and tell us why it's a good thing to give something for free. It's very easy to do that in the house today. And that's what side of, that's what side proposition is telling us, right? Oh, they want to give education and it's free. Lovely. It's good for everyone. We admit that. Look, if you want to give something for free, it's a good thing. But side opposition have the tough job of telling you why it's practically wrong. We told you why it's practically wrong, even though you're giving this thing for free. We told you why it's a why it's actually harming the players right? in terms of distractions. We told you why it's actually harming the sport because of competitive balance. We told you why it's a cost to the league and a and a financial cost to the league that it doesn't need to bear, right? Because at the end of the day, if we have a side proposition who is willing to come up to the house today and tell us, look, in case this in case this player is gonna fail, then we are going to have him change degrees or change unis. Look, that's not something that we want to encourage in encourage in status quo. We don't want waste. We don't want a wasteful set of players who are ready to expend the use of expand the resources of the sports league just for things like that because the responsibility of the sports league at the end of the day like my previous speaker said is that it's supposed to be bringing it's supposed to be uh to the benefit of the sport and that at the end of the day is not happening according to side propositions motion today ladies and gentlemen we told you three subs we, we gave you our three substantives right we told you exactly what the responsibility of the sports league is right we tell we told you exactly exactly how this is harming player choice, right? We told you that at the end of the day, um, these players have the need to have a choice in terms of how they want to go through their life, right? These players are not idiots, ladies and gentlemen. We told you that at the end of the day, if they choose to pick a sport, if they choose to follow something that they are genuinely good at, then they should give in their all towards that sport. And we told you that if, if, if we're running the uh, sort of idea that, look, these people are working in their prime and therefore it's a short prime and therefore at the end of the day, if they if they risk it and they fail it, then they're going to be on the road. We tell you that that's not entirely true, right? If this if the, like we told, like we mentioned earlier, if this prime is so short, if this prime is something that they're going to end up on the road immediately after, we we don't see the we don't see the issue in the sense that why they can't go back to education, why they can't pursue other forms of uh, other forms of success, because at the end of the day, that's what that's what hard work really is, right? It's a it's a competitive world out there. And the and sports leagues sports leagues need to be encouraging a competitive world rather than one that is something that is easy to get through and as something as a handout like what side proposition is trying to come up with right we told you why it's encouraging a negative stigma in society right our third substantive we told you why we don't want people in society thinking that oh this free handout is there for everyone who enters the enters the um, 
will flee. Right? We'd like to tell you that at the end of the day, we don't want to encourage a society where people only believe that intelligence in itself is one that you get by following primary, secondary, tertiary education. Right? That's not what makes people successful right now. We tell you that there's, in, there's, there's a large amount of unemployed individuals who don't have degrees, right? We mentioned that earlier. We have a, we, who actually have degrees, sorry. Um, we'd like to tell you that by encouraging a, a model like this, we, uh, by, by side proposition, encouraging a model like this, you're actually doing something inherently bad, even though it's good, a, even though they want to claim that it's something that is generally good for society, right? And that is why we'd like you to side with side opposition. Thank you so much. Thank you for the speech. Let's conclude today with government reply here, here. Hi, uh, can you hear me again? Hello? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, I'm audible. All right. Uh, I'll just start my timer before I begin. Starting in three, two, one. Now, we believe youthfulness should never be used as a currency, as the only means for you to explore your world, as the exclusive thing that allows it to peak in careers. Opposition skirts their burden in proving their not proving their counterfactual. They never clarified why all their benefits are exclusive. Three things that I'll do. The first thing is the extraneous things that we've heard from side opposition and dealing with them in the best case. Second is why they ultimately lose. And last is the comparative why we ultimately win. Three things on the first note. The first thing is they say, it's not a sports league responsibility. We told you three things why this is still important as a state responsibility. One, power asymmetry exists with professional leagues and players, and this must be controlled. Two, the ex this is still an extension of welfare because oftentimes you're not born within the top 1% of society. But three, let's be realistic in the debate. Even if this is existing in the private sector, Neil already told you that these companies or leagues are registered under the government before organizational work happens, as mentioned by him. Second, DLO told you about that we didn't have a model or defined what we do. Actually, this is wrong. The first thing that we say is we have fear to suggest that this is already applied to all professional leagues, being mandatory condition for them to have athletes. Second, we question the model of the side of opposition. Their comparative doesn't deal with its inherent harms mentioned by my previous speakers, but lastly, we'd just like to call out them being uncharitable in this debate. Three, opposition whip says that funds could have been gone to bettering sports instead. Four things. One, this is not exclusive to the end and largely unmechanized. Second, our comparison is for athletes, physical, and mental development that complements each other. But third, they never explain why they should remain the status quo as it is still existing with power symmetry. But fourth, lastly, this is irrelevant because we already told you from Prime Minister they have sufficient funds already. Second discussion, why do they ultimately lose? First thing is, opposition fail to engage impacts of the government side. Three things under this. One, they don't explain their trade-offs, why it's okay to commit on their end a significant amount of time and health while facing such uncertainties to their career paths. Second, even in their best case scenario, that athletes still land on coaching jobs and such. These are oftentimes exemptions rather than the norm. I told you in my speech, not everyone can be LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, and Michael Jordan. Three, the strongest push that they told you is this will demotivate you. This is untrue for three reasons. The first thing is that they don't prove why essentially motivation works on their end. Second, we told you that individuals look for long-term solutions, not limited only to your current physical health status. But three, we told you you deny them of other opportunities provided by tertiary education as opposed to RN that provides them actually more incentive to stay in sports. Fourth, the compensation that they say from opposition side is actually not great as they mentioned but we said a compensation already was mentioned from pm and dpm we told you that two things the harm is already too great that you will be bound and enslaved without the fallback after you are done doing your service but second we'd say salary is also another compensation that can exist on our side so therefore all the things that the material that mentioned of opposition side is likely to be unmechanized in this debate and largely significantly on Underanalyze. Why do we win? We bit our worst case that even if we have time constraints and this happens all the time, Neil told you that this is a burden distributed among all teams where everyone studies. But second, they say what if they learn just after their careers? Two things. The first thing is to say youth is vital in building fundamental skills as what my government said. But second, let's analyze their long-term scenario. There's less accountability and willingness to commit on their end if players have already quote unquote served their times in their careers. The conclusion to this entire discussion is to suggest we don't lock them out of opportunities defined only in the sports industry, but our benefits extend beyond their career, their athletic careers. 
that they can find fulfillment and more experiences outside sports. Second, we talked about the circumstances of athletes prior to them being hired. They care about their future. They said that they're vulnerable and poor in their framing. Therefore, it's likely to be working on our end if you have additional compensations even on government side. Third, they are unlikely to land in good-paying jobs with limited education as framed by my speech in DPM. But thirdly, what did we explain as exclusive benefits? One, you have a holistic approach in sports development. Second, when you have informed choices, you're able to find more fulfillment and exploration, etc. But three, the conclusion here is just to suggest we tackle the shortcomings of opposition, told you about informed choice and holistic development, which makes athletes perform better and competitive. But three, we were most charitable and realistic in today's debate. Therefore, we're proud to propose. Thanks. Okay, thank you for the debate. Uh, welcome to stop recording.